Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship and Marriage, aka Rema. My name is Enefiok Udonka, and today we are going to be talking about how to build a Christian family. How to build a Christian family. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus was asked, what's the greatest law of all? And he answered, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength and with all your might. And in Deuteronomy chapter 6, Moses instructing the children of Israel, say, these sayings, these laws I've given to you, all right? teach it to your children, teach it to them in the house, teach it to them in the field, teach it to them along the wayside, teach it to them everywhere. Make sure you write it on your lintel, make sure you hang it upon your post. That is, the word of God should surround you. Basically, that's what he was saying. And he was speaking to parents. So the primary responsibility of teaching God's word to your family rests on you, the parents. It's not on the Sunday school. It's not on the church. They are just supplementing whatever it is that you are doing at home. And so you have to make the word of God a primary issue in your home. Now, I'm going to give you some tips on how to do this, but basically the strategy that you're going to use depends on you and the peculiarities of your family. Some families have parents that are in business. Some have parents that do a nine-to-five job. And some parents are even separated physically. But whatever strategy you are going to come up will depend on your family. All I'm going to give you here are tips, but it's left for you to design the strategy in which to build your own children in the Lord. The first tip I'm going to give you is has to do with routine. Routine. When we're in secondary school, I mean, I went to a boarding school, now every minute of your day is planned for you, ahead of you. Every minute is planned. There's a time for waking up, there's a time for eating your breakfast, there's a time taking your meals, there's a time for chapel, there's a time for everything, basically, had a time for it. Those chapel moments taught me a lot of hymns. There are basically a lot of hymns that, I mean, after secondary school, I still remember them. I can still recall them and sing them by heart. That was the training that that gave to me. Now, discipline is doing something, all right, whether you feel like it or not at a particular time. That is discipline. Doing what you need to do at a particular time, whether you feel like doing it or not. All right? And so routine builds discipline. All right? Each home has its own routines. All right? Sometimes um, you wake up in the morning, uh, morning rush, everybody needs to go out, the parents need to go to work, children need to go to school. There are routines that you do daily. You need to build spiritual time into your routines. Time where you come together as a family to pray. Time where you come together as a family to read the word of God. Time where you come together as a family to share testimonies of what God has done to you, to praise, to worship him, right? Spiritual time needs to be created and built into your routine. Whether it's going to be in the morning, whether it's going to be in the evening, whether it's going to be um, once a week, twice a week, every day, depending on the peculiarities of their family. But these routines have to be planned and adhered to. Planned and adhered to all the time, all right? That way you have a steady flow of spiritual word of God. Now, you don't even need to be a pastor to be able to share with your children, all right? All you need to do is on your daily readings with the word of God because you have to be a practicing Christian yourself to be able to teach your children, all right? So what God shares with you on a daily basis, you share it with your children. Devotionals are out there to help too if you need help from anywhere too. You can just read a devotional, share from the devotional and probably build in some experiences that you have as a family, all right, and these are also moments that you pray for something, and when God answers that prayer, you give the testimony. Let the children see how God works in your lives during those moments. All right, so routine is the first thing. You must build it into your routine. 
The second thing is random moments. Now, God will always provide random moments for you to explain spiritual things to your children. Children are very inquisitive. They can ask you question. Oh, why is the sky doing like this? You have an opportunity to talk about the creation story. What, what is this? The questions will come and opportunities will always abound for you to talk about the works of God in the lives of people. Either through the questions they ask or through events that happen around you or through things that you see and you need to explain those phenomena to them. You always have a way of infusing God into whatever you are teaching your children per time. And it's those random moments that count a lot where you catch them off guard. Those moments where they are informal. You know, the routine one I talked about is a formal setting, but these are informal settings where you use those opportunities to teach your children the word of God. All right? And the third one is milestones. Milestones. Milestones like birthdays, um, naming ceremonies. You know what milestones are in life. Milestones are very, very important because milestones help remembrance all right everybody remembers his first birthday i remember my first gift my wife gave me um my birthday when we got married it was a milestone i remember this this ring i'm wearing here reminds me of a milestone in my life when i got married now milestones are very very important and there are two kinds of milestones the milestones that you mark and the milestones that you make all right Milestones that you mark include things like birthdays, um, you know, baptism, or the first communion, or all those things. All those are milestones that you mark. They are not created by you. You just mark them. Christmas is a milestone that we all mark. All right? But there are also milestones that you will make as a family. You will make those milestones as a family. All right? Jesus marked some milestones and he made some milestones like communion he made it he instituted communion all right as a milestone for us you can institute milestones into your family to boost up their spirituality for instance the first person to read the bible from cover to cover the day he finishes reading the bible from cover to cover you do a little celebration a milestone every milestone in your family make it spiritual Milestones doesn't have to be just about celebration alone. It has to be preparation for the next level for your children. You mark milestones with prayers. You mark milestones even with fasting sometimes. Fastings are milestones too. All right? First time your child fasts from to 12 o'clock, it's a milestone. First time your child fasts 6 to 6, it's a milestone. You mark it, you celebrate it. You don't just let it flip like that. Right? Mark those milestones. It's those milestones that they will remember. It's those milestones that will encourage them. It's those milestones that will give them the fuel to go to the next level. Now, finally, Maria Angelou once showed any man that wants to change the world to first look to his family. So I'm encouraging you as a father, as a mother, or as a potential father and as a mother, Make your family your priority. Teach them the word of God and they will be strong. Teach them the word of God and they will grow. Teach them the word of God and they will do exploits. Thank you. Until next time, next week, when we come again with another word from Rema, it is bye-bye.